In this session, we are going to play out the project template for the Fulfillment Center network optimization. The objectives are To ensure fulfillment capacity to process the demand units To satisfy the outbound shipment delivery service levels, such as same day percentage, next day percentage, etc. And, to minimize the average weighted distance of the shipments and the total network costs in mathematical optimization terms, this is called location allocation optimization, that is to determine the optimal number of FCs for the network, the optimal locations of the FCs, and the optimal sizes of the FCs. The key input data set includes sales or demand units by geographical region, such as within a zip code area, the list of candidate locations to set up FCs, there may be constraints for each candidate's FC location. The capacity limit due to the building size. A distance range or radius limit due to shipment delivery time service level requirements. And, some FC locations may be forced into the solution due to existing circumstances. Our modeling software has the following features. The easy to import and edit sales and demand data as input. To import and edit the list of FC candidates to add, remove, and force into the solution. The edit candidate constraints, such as capacity limit and the distance range. The simulate what-if scenarios, such as 1 FC, 2 FCs, 3 FCs, etc., and present the results as options for decision-making. The display the scenarios with maps, dashboard charts, and tables. The save and export the results. And, above all, it's simple to use and fast for scenario executions. Now, let's start the application and open the project for fulfillment network optimization. Open the project. Optimize USA network. First, let's take a look at the project menu items. The project menu items here are all we need for the fulfillment network optimization modeling. The first menu item here is to select or import the sales or demand data source. There are three options. 1. In the absence of your own product sales data, you can assume that your potential demand is a proportion of the population. 2. You do have your product's historical shipment data, which can be used to project the demand units by geographical regions or zip codes. And, lastly, you have already prepared the demand data as direct input to the model. So, let's take a look at this one first. Let's select a data file that you've already prepared. This file has these columns. ID. X, the longitude. Y, the latitude. And, the demand units, which is the most important column as input data. Import this data file. Now, the demand data is loaded into this table, named Market Demand Points. And, the demand points are nicely displayed on the map. This table is good enough as demand input data to the optimization algorithm. Now, suppose you don't have the demand data file directly. Instead, you have a data file containing the product's historical shipment records. You can use this option to derive the market demand units. So, let's give it a try. Select a new shipment data file to import. Here's a file named Historical Shipments. It contains these columns. Open. The lines on the map represent the shipment records. Look at the columns. The distance is computed by the algorithm based on the from ID and to ID. And the color is assigned based on the distance range of each shipment. Let's click on a shipment on the map. Alright, let's turn off the display for the historical shipments so we can look only at the derived demand points on the map. Let's now turn off the display for the demand points and look at another way to derive the demand data. 
which is to use the US population data as the basis. Here, we can select a proportion number for demand units per thousand people. Let's select this number. So, here's the demand points derived from the population clusters. No matter where the data source comes from, the final demand data is put into the table called market demand points. And this is going to be the demand input data for the optimization algorithm. Let's turn off the display for the demand points. Now, let's take a look at the FC candidates. Normally, when we open the project we have been working on, we should already have the data table containing the FC candidate list. Like this table. Of course, we can select a new data file for the candidates. Here's a simple data file for the FC candidates. With only three columns. Let's import it in and initialize the input columns. In addition to these three require columns, we also need to set default values for the optional input columns. The value for the column, fixed, is 0 or 1 if we want to force the candidate into a solution. Here's the capacity limit and the distance radius limit. If the initial data file has these columns, we would just use the values as provided. Otherwise, we need to set default values. These two columns are the output of the optimization algorithm. This column indicates if this candidate is selected or not. And this column is the total captured demand by the FC. So now, we have the demand data ready. And the FC candidate list ready. We can prepare the scenario list for solutions. Let's clear the scenario summary statistics since we are starting from scratch. So, here's the list of scenarios we want to explore. Scenario 0 is for the benchmarking of the historical shipment data. Scenario 1 is for the optimal solution using only one fulfillment center. The key metrics would be stored in these columns. The average weighted miles is a good measurement to compare or evaluate the quality or optimality of the solutions. These columns measure the service level performance, the percentage for next day service, the two day service, etc. As we run each scenario, the corresponding statistics are stored here. Let's adjust the map view to have a better display as we run the scenarios. Now, let's run the scenario for 1FC. This is to use 1FC to service the entire continental USA. And, this is the optimal FC selected by the optimization algorithm. The outbound shipment lines are color-coded based on distance bands, which also indicate service levels. Let's bring up the scenario list table and look at the solution output statistics. Here, the average weighted distance for this scenario is 802 miles. Suppose we want to manually override the solution and force a different FC candidate into the solution. Let's fix this candidate and re-optimize the scenario. The new value for the average weighted distance is now 871 miles, which is higher than for the optimal solution. Let's unfix this candidate and let the algorithm select the optimal candidate. Now, the average weighted distance is back to 802 miles. Let's continue with the next scenario. 
we can just do mouse double click on the row header here to trigger the optimization for this scenario. Double click. So, here's the solution for the 2FC network. As you can see, the average weighted distance is much lower than for the 1FC scenario. Similarly, we can do mouse double click on scenario 3 to trigger the optimization run. Double click. And, we have the optimal solution for scenario 3. This FC is located in Philly. Suppose we want to force a nearby candidate into the solution. Like this one in New Jersey. And, re-optimize the scenario. Now we have a new network footprint for scenario 3. Again, if we want to fix the candidate in Atlanta into the solution, we can do this. And, re-optimize it. So, now we have the Atlanta FC in the solution. Notice, the average weighted distance is lower than for scenario 2. Let's continue with the next scenario. However, instead of manually running the scenarios one by one, we can let the algorithm loop through all the scenarios automatically. From scenario 4 to 12. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Notice here, as each scenario is optimized, the dashboard charts are automatically updated with the new summary statistics. The second chart here shows the average weighted distance for the scenarios, and it trends downward as the number of FCs increases. Look here, there's a candidate in Miami that's elected by the algorithm. Suppose we don't want it there. That is, we want to exclude this candidate from the consideration. We can delist it. And re-optimize the scenario. Now this candidate is no longer in the solution, and the candidate in Orlando is selected instead. So, this is how to fix a candidate into the solution, and how to remove a candidate from the list. Now let's see how to add a new candidate to the list. Let's go to scenario 5 for illustration. Select scenario 5 and mouse double click on the row header to run the optimization. Suppose we have a particular location in mind at the mouse click location here and we want to add this location to the candidate list. Like this. Furthermore, if we want to force it into the solution, we just fix it. Be aware, when we force this into the solution for the same number of FCs, it will replace another FC. Either this one. Or this one. Let's find out. Looks like it replaced this one and shifted this one a little bit to the east. Let's unfix this one and restore the optimal solution. This is how we add a new candidate to the list and how force it into the solution. Let's add a limit to the capacity of a fulfillment center and see what the impact would be like. Let's use this FC as a test. Right now, the default capacity is set to a big number, so it's virtually unlimited. And it captures 6500 demand units from its assigned regions. Let's set its capacity to, say, 3000, which is much less than the captured demand. Now, let's run the optimization.
As you can see, this FC now covers a smaller region, pushing these demand points to the other FCs. Some to here. And some to here. And, the captured demand is 3000, which is equal to the capacity. Let's relax the capacity to restore the optimal solution. Re-optimize the scenario. It recaptured those demand points. Let's see how the distance radius limit impacts the solution. Set the distance range to, say, 200. Run the optimization algorithm. So, now it covers a much smaller region, pushing the rest of the demand points to the other FCs. Let's restore the optimal solution. There's a menu item here that we can show or hide the current scenario title on the screen. This may be need for presentation. Okay, let's rerun all the scenarios and see how each is displayed on the map. From 1 to 12. Remember we delist the FC candidate in Miami, so it should not appear in the solution. And the candidate in Orlando is used when needed. And the dashboard pie chart shows the outbound shipment distance distribution for the current scenario. Twenty four per cent of the shipments are within the fifty mile radius. Thirty one per cent in the range between fifty to one hundred fifty mile radius. And so on and so forth. We have just walked through the major features of the project template for the fulfillment center network optimization. As you can see, the project menu items make it super easy for the user to perform the network modeling and simulation of various scenarios. You may also have noticed the fast execution speed of the optimization run for the scenarios. Just like the earlier tutorials, all the project files covered in this session are available for download inside SCM. Of course, you need to download and install SCM distribution package first. Then, you can use the project template to perform your own fulfillment network modeling and simulation. Furthermore, if you have watched the video clips of the earlier tutorials, you should know that you can customize the project menus to suit your particular needs. Such as adding new menu items to the project template and run your own macro files. There's no limit to what you can do with SCM. Thank you.